Coming up on the Sports Fest, after capturing their first CIF Southern Section title, the North Saxons are looking to carry that momentum into state regional play. Plus, the boys over at Bishop are still killing it. Find out if they could continue their 2015 success in the tough state regional open division tourney. Meanwhile, the El Camino Warriors baseball squad has been having a roller coaster like season so far. We'll show you if they could level out their season against El Camino College Compton Center. And as always, we'll get you all caught up on scores, highlights, and updates on Torrance's prep and JUCO sports scene. The sports desk starts right now. How's it going, Torrance? Welcome to another week here on the Sports Desk. I'm your host, Colin Kushner. Remember, hit me up on Twitter. That's at Colin Kushner using the hashtag the Sports Desk and, of course, hashtag Boom Sauce. Getting straight to it, the girls' basketball programs with Torrance have just been crushing it this year. Plain and simple, four out of the five Torrance schools won their CIF Southern Section brackets and have now made it to the state regional tourney. And, well, to start things off, the North Saxons have been having a season to remember. A perfect 10-0 in Pioneer League play with their last loss coming over a month ago. The laundry list of accomplishments this season just goes on and on. So far in the playoffs, they breeze through the Southern Section Division III tourney, and it would be interesting to see if they could carry that momentum in a round one of state regional play. The Saxons averaging just about 60 points per game in the playoffs thus far. Taking on Arvin, first quarter, Caitlin Sirazawa with the long J, good. North takes an early lead. Second quarter, Metali to McPherson to Oshiro. The Saxons up by 15. Very next play, Sheridan Metali with the steal. And Kylie Oshiro is going to take it all the way for the lay-in and one. She hits the free throw. North up 45-17 at recess. Third quarter, great perimeter ball movement. Brittany McPherson for three. Good. North up by 30 at the end of the third to the fourth. Sheridan Metali dribbles up. Six spin move and gets the basket to go. Let's take another look. Metali, whoop, that's gonna go. Winner, winner, chicken farm dinner. North goes on to win 71 to 44. So the Saxons win yet again with another all around team effort. I mentioned this last week, but the chemistry they have reminds me of those 2004 Pistons. Out of the six playoff games played so far, the 27 point win over Arvin is the Saxons' second lowest margin of victory in the playoffs so far. North puts them in the second round against, of the state regional tourney against the South Pasadena squad that just like the Saxons went perfect in league play. North taking on the Tigers. The Saxons looking to make it nine straight wins. Six of those coming in the playoffs. Let's pick it up in the second quarter. North up 31-25. Mega Takata for the deep two. Good. The Saxons up by five at recess. Third quarter, South Pasadena now up by two. Sirizawa with the jumper. That's going to go. North cuts the deficit to just two. Then Caitlin Sirizawa for three. Boom sauce. North regains the lead up 44-42. Coach doing a little chalk talk later in the third. Kamiya drives in, gets it to go. North up by 13 at the end of the third to the fourth. Daily Tuwali, sick pass to McPherson with the lay in. Let's take another look. Tawali, she's just going to, oh my God, it's just so silky smooth. And later in the fourth, Riley Kamiya for three. North takes down South Pasadena, 70 to 57. Caitlin Sarazawa has 16 points. Riley Kamiya has 15. And Brittany McPherson adds 12 in the victory. So North adds another dub and advances to the state regional semis against an El Dorado team they narrowly beat for their first ever CIF Southern Section title. For more on the North High Saxons and their playoff run, Kiana Martin has that story for you. North girls basketball matched up with Arvin High and South Pasadena for not just any set of games. These matchups followed a season worth of celebrations and a test of what is to come. For the first time in school history, the Lady Saxons brought home their first CIF championship. But now, these ladies are refocusing on bringing home another title, the state title. After we won the CIF championship, I told them as a team to come up with a team goal as far as what they wanted to do the rest of the season. Um, because ultimately, 
in the beginning of the year, it was their goal to win the CIF Southern Section Championship. Um, so now that they came back on Monday and told me they want to win the state championship, um, it's a matter of just refocusing them each game at a time. And after today, we got to come back tomorrow. We got lots of work to do. It feels great because we made like a new goal that we want to win state now. So it's just we want to try to push ourselves to achieve that goal. Dominating in the first two rounds of the state championships, the Saxons are now heading to the Southern State Regional Semifinals for a rematch game against El Dorado. After their championship defeat against El Dorado the first time around, these young title holders credit more than just their practices and knowledge of the game to their success. They credit their chemistry and the camaraderie of their team. Our team is really, we're really close. We have a lot of chemistry together on and off the court, and I think that's why we're really good this year. It's just that that bond we have, it just makes it better for us. Fresh off of winning their first CIF championship in school history, these Lady Saxons are hungrier than ever on the route to win a CIF state championship. They're really excited that they won the CIF championship, but at the same time, it's we're on to state at this point, so it's a matter of refocusing them um, and coming back for this game. I think it starts with practice. Like, if we all push each other in something that we're not so good at, then it'll all come together in the end. Coming off of a perfect league season, these Lady Saxons anticipate continuing breaking new records and, more importantly, continuing to set, aim, and reach their desired goals. From Torrance, I'm Kiana Martin, reporting from the Sports Desk. Thanks for that, Kiana. Now, down south, the Spartans looking to get through the first round of state regional play. Coach Ima Murray and co. lost the regular season finale against the Saxons and since then have won five straight, looking to make that six against Garfield. Let's pick it up in the third quarter. South up 54-30 against the Woof Woof Bulldogs. Christy Takahashi causes a turnover and gets this for the easy land. South up by 26. Then Fajardo with the miss, but Taylor Bucala has got you back. South up by or up by double digits. Later in the third, Alexis Henry with the steal, and she's going to dribble up. Dish to Christy Takahashi, who lays it in off the glass. South up by 22 at the end of the third to the fourth. South still up. Alexis Henry takes it all by herself. She would have 19 in this one. And later in the fourth, the younger Takahashi slices, dices, floater, boom sauce. She would have 16 as the Spartans go on to root Garfield. Nineteen points and Christy Takahashi had six assists in the win, so that's South's sixth straight victory. The Spartans averaging over sixty-seven points per game in the playoffs so far. And in round two, the state regional tourney, South finally meets their match. The Spartans fall to Rodano Union, fifty-seven forty-seven. It's the first loss for South since February, and the first time they have been held to under fifty points since that regular season finale loss against North. Meanwhile, for the West Warriors, they captured their second straight Southern Section title, and that was after moving from Division 2A to Division 1A. In the state regional tourney last year, the Warriors made it all the way to the state regional finals and lost. This year, they breezed through round one against Edison, 52-38. On to the second round, West down by 10 at the end of the first half and outscores the Broncos in the final three quarters of play. But a 21-10 first quarter by Vista Murrieta was enough to outlast, outlast the Warriors 67-60. Kayla Sato has 18 points, and Kaylee Atkinson has 14 in the loss. It's the Warriors' first loss since early February when they lost at the hands of Pioneer rivals, you guessed it, the North Saxons. West falls just short of last year's regional finals trip. Now, rounding out the girls' prep basketball news, the Bishop Montgomery Knights. The girls over at Bishop coming off their second straight Southern Section title, looking to capture their first state title since the 2003 season. Bishop taking on a Rossi in round one of the state regional tourney. Coming into this one, the Knights holding their opponents to just under 49 points per game. There's Christine Delapina giving out some high fives. First quarter, Delapina with the steal, and she's gonna dish to Jessica Melazarte, who finds Sophia Carroll for the bucket. Carroll just getting warmed up a few plays later. And at Kitamura inbounds in, Malazarde drains the three. Bishop clicking on all cylinders. Malazarde again for three. Boom sauce. Just feeling it from long range. Knights up by 11 at the end of the first. Second quarter, Bishop still up. Kayla Kinglet's going to take it all the way in, channeling her inner Shaquille O'Neal. Later in the second, Delapina for three. 
She's got it. She would have 18 points on the night. The Knights take over and beat up the Cardinals 67 to 34. So Bishop collects their seventh straight win. Sophia Carroll has 18 points and 11 rebounds, while Christine Delapina adds 18 points as well. And in round two against Oaks Christian, the Lions got revenge against the Knights, who beat them in the CIF Southern Section semis last year. Oaks Christian was up by double digits at recess, which seals the Knights' fate. It was Bishop's second straight year heading to state regional play. They lost in the same round to Modern Day last season. So here's a little team comparison for you. Coach Bridget Reyes led the Knights to, the two, to two CIF Southern Section Championships and two appearances to the second round of the state regional tourney in two seasons as head coach. Both teams had first round buys in the Division IV AA Southern Section first round. So in six playoff games, the 2014 Knights averaged just over 53 points per game, pulling their opponents to just under 40. Now the 2015 Knights averaging 65 points per game, holding their opponents ju to just under 50 per contest. The 2015 Knights scoring more, but giving up more, while the 2014 Knights scored less, but gave up less to their opponents. Just like my breakdown of the West Warriors last week, both teams pretty close numbers, and unfortunately the same end result in the Southern State Regional Tourney. Meanwhile, the boys at Bishop have been on fire, and so has the weather outside here in the South Bay. My gut tells me that has absolutely nothing to do with how good the Knights have been up to this point. The Knights, according to Max Preps, are ranked number one in the state and number two nationally. Bishop has won 22 games in a row, has only lost one game the entire year. Yeah, I just said it, one game. So, the Knights looking to advance to the state regional semifinals for the third straight year. Bishop taking on St. Augustine. This game would be all STJ. First quarter, Bishop up 16 to four, STJ for three, good. Thompson Jr. just getting warmed up. Second quarter, STJ, fade away. He's gonna fall and gets it to go. Bishop up by 11, same quarter. Thompson Jr. with the steal and the easy finish. The Knights up by 14 now. Final seconds of the second, STJ for three. And he beats the buzzer. Bishop up 13 at recess. Thompson Jr. would have 19 of his 29 in the first half. Fourth quarter, Thompson Jr. with the steal. And two-hand jams at home. Let's take another look. Thompson Jr., Can You Take Me Higher by Creed. Great song, nice dunk. The Knights go on to win 75-61. Steven Thompson Jr. has 29 points. And Christian Oshida has 19 as the Knights roll on to the state regional semis, taking their 23rd straight victory. So, if you want to play like Steven Thompson Jr. or some of Torrance's biggest stars on the court this summer, the South Bay Riptide AAU basketball program will be holding their annual tryouts on Sunday, March 29th at 6.30 p.m. For more info on the Riptide, visit their website. That's southbayriptide.com, or you can shoot them an email. That's southbayriptide2014 at outlook.com. When we come back, we are going to take you to the volleyball court to see whether the North and South boys come away with some non-league wins. Stay right where you are. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky. But, but he's ignoring, ignoring the instructions. instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. Oh! Mom! See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back, everybody. Remember, hit me up on Twitter. That's at Colin Kushner using the hashtag the sports desk and, of course, hashtag boom sauce. Springtime is just around the corner, and prep baseball has just gotten underway. Here in the South Bay, the prestigious El Segundo tournament 
which has been around since the 1970s, was started by the late legendary El Segundo coach John Stevenson. Over the years, the El Segundo tourney has become a tradition each spring featuring top teams from the South Bay and beyond. The 20-team tournament came to a close with powers like the Torrance Tartars, who won the CIF Division IV title over South last year, coming up empty. And in the championship game against Bellflower, West comes out swinging early, scoring three runs in the first two innings, but Bellflower ties it up in the third. And in the bottom of the seventh, West catcher Nathan Santiago hits a walk-off single, driving in Josh Williams as the Warriors take the El Segundo tourney with a 4-3 win over the Buccaneers. West takes their fifth game in a row, and senior Jackson Cooper captures tournament MVP. Let's take a look at how West got to this point. They lost their first two games of the season before the tournament to Miracosta getting outscored 23-2. From there, they rallied off five straight wins in the tourney, averaging just over four runs per game. Switching gears now, boys prep volleyball is underway. The North Saxons won their first two games, then lost four straight, but were able to get back in the win column against Jordan. North trying to grab their second winning streak of the season. The Saxons taking on Chadwick. North trying to avenge a three-game sets to one loss from last season. Both teams exchange blows throughout this one, but it's the Chadwick Dolphins that come up with the three sets to two victory over the Saxons. Meanwhile, over to South Boys Volleyball, the Spartans, winners at three straight, looking to make that four against Palos Verdes. South is two and five overall against the Sea Kings since 2011. First set, 28-27 PV. South's Troy Ellis gets that. South ties this up, but goes on to lose the first set, 32-30. Second set, South down by a few, Dutko. He's gonna fake the spike, a little scoop shot, and the Spartans lose the second set, 25-16, third set. PV with the servant, Ducko just two hands at in. South down seven to three, and later in the third set, Chase Sabalos with the save, and it's gonna bounce around. PV with the spike, and that's gonna go out of bounds. However, the Spartans take the point, but drop the third set, 25-18, and get swept by Palos Verdes. So the Spartans win streak gets snapped as the Sea Kings continue to have their way with South. Now in the Pacific League Varsity Invitational, South starts off the tourney with two wins against Glendale and Crescenta Valley, but falls in the semis against West Ranch, three sets to one. Rounding out your prep sports news, the West Warriors girls soccer team recently captured their first Southern Section title since 1982. And they also took the Pioneer League crown after making the switch from the Bay League. With plenty of hardware already collected, the Warriors looking to get it done in the first round of the CIF State Regional Tourney against La Mirada. This one comes down to overtime. La Mirada's Maddie Bennett finds Twine in the 86th minute to end the Warriors' season. It's the first time since January that the Warriors were shut out. And in six playoff matches this season, West shut out their opponents in four of those. When we come back, we are going to get you all caught up on your JUCO news. Plus, we'll talk some March Madness bracketology. Stay right where you are. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Remember, hit me up on Twitter. That's at Colin Kushner using the hashtag the sports desk, sports desk and, of course, hashtag Boom Sauce. Elko, losers of four straight, trying to get back in the win column against El Camino College Compton Center. The Warriors lost a wild first game of the three-game series 13-11 to the Tartars. 
Elko hasn't beaten El Camino College Compton Center since 2012 when they won the series two games to one. Chris Kala warming up on the mound. Top five, Julian Perez drives it to left. Back, 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 back. Turner with the grab. He's going to fall on that. Looks like he was on a slip and, slip and slide. Bottom eight, Tartar's up 7-6. Keon Allen doubles to left. Ricardo Serrano is going to round third, and he's going to touch him or touch home plate. The Warriors score four runs in the inning to take a 10-7 lead. Top nine, Sanchez on the mound for Elko. A well hit ball to first, 6-4-3. Nope, not a double play. That's going to go into the dugout. The Tartars score three runs in the ninth to tie this up to extras. Bottom of the 11th, Tartars up 11-10. Alex Turner grounds to first. Elko falls 11-10 in extras. The Warriors lose to the Tartars again, and in the third game of the series, things wouldn't get any better. The Tartars put up 10 runs, finishing up the weak sweep of the Warriors, averaging just over 11 runs per game. The Warriors, on the other hand, not feeling the luck. They dropped to 0-6 in conference play and have now lost six straight. Over in men's volleyball, the Warriors staying strong in conference play. Elko grabs their fourth dub in a row and their third straight sweep. The Warriors improved to 12-1 overall and 5-1 in conference play. Now I got a question for you. Who wants to go dancing? No, no, not line dancing or ballroom dancing. I'm talking dancing on the hardwood, or as normal people like to call it, March Madness. Warren Buffett had his billion dollar bracket challenge last year. I tried that, but it didn't exactly work out. So I have a, I have a proposition for all of you. Join the Sports Desk TV pool right here, and the winning bracket will be featured on the show and will also win a special prize. So if you want to take on myself and the rest of the Sports Desk crew, you can go to our Facebook page or hit me up on Twitter for the link throughout for the link. Throughout March Madness, I want to hear from you. So please hit me up on Twitter with your picks and anything March Madness related. What would March Madness be without some representation from Torrance's own? Three former Bishop Montgomery Knights, Tyler Harvey, Kyle Reed, and OG Miljokovic, all representing Eastern Washington University in the tourney. Tyler Harvey led the nation in scoring during the regular season with just under 23 points per game. The trio guiding the Eagles to just their second appearance to the dance in program history. Thanks again to everyone who hit us up on Twitter. If you tweet at Colin Kushner using the hashtag the sports desk and hashtag a boom sauce, we'll give you a shout out right here on the show. At BMHS Letterman Club, sending us his video from the boys' basketball game versus St. Augustine, saying, At Colin Kushner, thanks for coming out to the BMHS game and capturing the hashtag gauntlet at work, hashtag boom sauce and hashtag night pride. And at BMHS Letterman Club, also sending us another video from the boys' b ball game, Shh, silent night, hashtag the gauntlet, doesn't cheer until we hit our 10th point, then we get crazy, hashtag night pride and hashtag boom sauce. And lastly, Big thanks to Ad Hayden Tanabe for this video of the West girls after their first round win against Edison up yeah. in Fresno. We'll take another look. Boom sauce! Yeah! Looks like the hashtag boom sauce movement is catching on. All right, everybody, that's going to close the books on another week here on the Sports Fest. As always, we are available on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash the Sports Fest TV. Or if you'd like to email the show with any store ideas, it's the Sports Fest at torrentca.gov. Also, feel free to hit us up on Twitter with pics, video, or anything sports related here in the South Bay. That's at Colin Kushner, and use the hashtag the sports desk, and of course, hashtag boom sauce. And we're also on Instagram, so that's the sports desk TV. And don't forget, if you just feel like saying hi, you can do that as well. Take it easy, Torrance. We'll catch you next time.